are your dis or, second question are our descendants or our deceased excuse me loved ones really looking down on us are they sitting in heaven watching us now uh my answer to this is no I, I don't believe nor see in scripture where our unsaved loved ones. Now, let me let me first let me first show you a scripture that I, uh, I saw uh, a theologian use to say that they are that they, they're looking down at us at everything that we do. And I know it feels good hearing that. I don't know what type of hope that gives you. Maybe the hope that, yeah, they are alive because they're looking at me. Let me let me preference this with some other things. I'm going to Hebrews chapter 12. Uh, this is the verse he tried to use to say. Uh, uh, but no, our loved, our dead loved ones are not guardian angels. God does not give them the now life assignment of watching over us. You should not be communicating to your loved ones. You should not be talking to them. I don't, go to the gravesite if you want to. I'm not arguing that, but you should not go to the gravesite and talk to them. No, absolutely not. But we shouldn't be talking to loved ones. We it, we we should not be asking God to allow our transitioned loved ones to speak to us so that we can get comfort. Holy Spirit is our comforter. I'm telling you, the church. When we get to this witchcraft, the church don't believe that God is enough. That's why we practice in witchcraft and a lot of stuff. That's why we're doing a lot of witchy poo stuff, because we don't believe just simply doing it God's way will work. And that Holy Spirit can be the comforter and the guide and the teacher. And Jesus' blood works. We, so we add all this other stuff and we still go deeper. We still fall deeper into that sinkhole because that stuff does not work. And yet we keep doing it. And I know it don't work because my counseling is full of people that are dealing with stuff that's years old when God was ready to rescue them a month out, a week out. He was ready. We're not, I'm, I'm going to take a side note, a lot of these traumas we are dealing with, we're dealing with a lot of these traumas. And I, and I know, I know I'm know, i going to get a lot of kickback from, from, my, uh, from my psychologist and my therapist. Listen, I'm on your side. We work together, but let's just be honest. You need clients. <laughs> let's just be honest let's just be honest and God don't want us managing God want us he delivered us he set us free he delivered us out of the kingdom of darkness you know he don't want us trying to find uh ways to manage stuff whom the son have set free is free indeed and so the truth is we're not teaching people how to get rid of this stuff the bible way go to the person the bible says take somebody with you if they won't hear you forgive quickly is what the and but when we don't operate when we don't take the biblical medicine quick we allow the sickness quote trauma to stay that's from the pastor down we are not we are not we are not responding thank you holy spirit we're not responding to kingdom to problems with kingdom resolve we're not. We're not responding to problems with kingdom resolve. And I've been saying this for, for over two, three years now, because we don't, even the church, we don't believe that Jesus is enough. We put him in, we, we played with Jesus in enough movies. We got enough, we've had enough worldly comedians to play with him. We've had worldly people make Christian albums and play with him and are still Muslims. We All of this stuff has happened, and what has it done? It has watered down the power and the name of Jesus. This is where we are. So we don't believe. So we got to add all this other stuff to it because Jesus ain't enough. He's not enough. It's just some stuff we just don't play with. And this is the unintended consequences when we thought we were just having fun, when we thought it was just a movie. People don't even, most Christians don't even go to Jesus first. They don't. 